there, internet. Mogwa here, and I took a shower. It's been a while, so just wanted to share that with you. And yeah, I have another video for you guys today as well, as we're going to showcase a deck that I am very, very excited to share. It's called Help! Because, because of this little thing, and uh, it's basically Tarek Jarvan Midrange. Now, while Tarek Jarvan Midrange is not really a new concept per se, I do believe the Frightened Ibex adds quite a bit to the archetype. And I also feel like this archetype, I haven't showcased it on the channel in a long time, and I think it's very, very underrated as a region combination and as a champion combination. As a list as a whole, it's just really strong. So the main reason to play Tarek with Jarvan. And the main reason, honestly, in my opinion, to play Tarek at all is Golden Aegis. Golden Aegis, uh, uh, effectively with Tarek, allows you to rally twice. That is my favorite champion duplicated, which is absolutely insane. But besides that, it's a very, very powerful effect that will allow you to also attack freely with Tarek, not having to worry about him taking any damage in retaliation thanks to the barrier. It can be also used defensively as well when the opponent tries to play a challenger, for example, to take down your Tarek. It's just a very strong combination. But a lot of people have deemed this archetype inconsistent because without Golden Aegis onto Tarek, it doesn't really do all that well. I beg to differ. I think this deck just needs an alternate win condition that's strong enough, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is Jarvan into King Jarvan III. King Jarvan III is incredibly underrated. It is super powerful. In a pinch, it can finish you Jarvan and basically be a late game bomb that allows you to you know, outvalue the opponent in these top deck wars that a lot of times you are engaging in. And in this deck, we can play Jarvan defensively with the barrier to deny an opponent's attack. And then the next turn, we play King Jarvan III and we get all of our allies with Challenger and Scout. This in a deck with Tarek and even Mountain Sojourner, who got recently buffed in the balance patch as a one-off. Just wanted to segue here in there. <laughs> it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like, this is a very, very powerful late game, a very powerful win condition, and I think today's gameplay is going to speak for that. So... We have Tarek with Golden Aegis, and we have Jarvan with King Jarvan III. But then, what does Frightened Ape Ibex do for this deck? It's just a one-drop, right? Sure, but the thing is, her ability of giving herself plus one, plus one, and plus one, plus one to the support unit allows this motherfucker to come back into the game. Warship got nerfed a while back, used to be a 2-3 and close to an auto include in the Masia decks, and now it's a two-mana 2-2 two -two and thus significantly worse. Uh, it's hard to justify this deck, it discarded most Demacia decks, but in this deck in particular, with Frying Ibex, we can turn it into a 3-3 attacking and have a 3-4 attacking by turn 2, if the attack token is with us, if not an open attack on turn 3, which is really strong, almost impossible to fully block into without losing value, and just a very neat way for us to start things off. Frying Ibex is also, it, it's like, she's like in a way... Uh, Greenglade Caretakers uh, version of like the the Jarvan Shen deck for Targon, right? And she does a lot in that sense. Uh, she can be utilized alongside Mentor of the Stones, making Mentor of the Stones a 2-2, and then she becomes a 4-5, uh, which, you know, pre preserving most of that stat line forever as well. And it's just a really nice unit to have as a one-off. A lot of times we need that support unit, and the fact that she... She's like the only unit that actually supports back, right? It's like it's like she's returning. She's returning the favor. And that really allows us to preserve our units. And it, it enhances our stat lines. It makes our units harder to block into, which also promotes our Jarvan the fourth level up as well. Like all these things fall into place. And this one drop really does go a long way for the archetype. And I'm really, really excited that we got a one drop like this. So that's why this deck came to be. Like I saw this in, in the expansion. I'm like, okay, what can I build around this? And this this deck just came to be. And it's been putting in the massive work, man. Like it's, uh, I, I had like an 11 game win streak with it in, in normal when I was play testing. I understand it's normal, it's casual, it's not ranked, but it's still an 11 game win streak and there's still good players there, believe it or not. And then we took it to ranked to record the live session and I don't want to spoil anything, but it, it got me climbing. It got me climbing pretty fast, so I, I really, I have a lot of good things to say about this deck. Uh, it may, one of the things about Legends of Terra is that a lot of times, you know, you need a certain period of time to pass before fully assessing how strong a deck is. 
But for my playstyle and everything, it's just been putting in the work. The idea is to set up these support chains, get some proper attacks. Uh, we utilize only Pale Cascade with Tarek because we don't really want to be playing more uh, combat tricks. One of the things that I fall, one of the traps that I fall into with Tarek is that I, I stack way too many combat tricks to try to get value off of him. But really, you only need Pale Cascade and Golden Aegis. You don't really need anything else, especially because the Mentor of the Stones give you gems anyways to use alongside him. And that's, I think, the real key reason of how, you use, how to use this champion. Because if you stack too many cheap combat tricks, you can draw too many spells and you never have a proper curve into a board state that Terra can actually benefit from and thus it just kind of works against you. So uh, even though it may seem like very few spells to work with him, it really is enough and we have a full set of single combat and concerted strike to be able to interact with the opponent. I love me some strike spells to disrupt my opponent's fun and that ladies and gentlemen is the deck list right there. Put a lot, a lot of thought into it, uh, very proud of it and I think it's super fun to play as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you do, you can leave a like, because it does help out the channel. And yeah, that's all I gotta say on this whole day. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. Hope you enjoy the games, I'll see you tomorrow. Man, I'm so excited to finally play this deck. Uh, I have like the craziest win streak. I mean, I was playing it normal, it's casual, right? Uh, that's where I test my decks. But even there, like getting an 11 game win streak is not easy. Like the deck must be performing really well. And I don't know, I was super happy about it. So, cause it's really fun. I, any excuse that I have to play Jarvan, man. I'll jump on that boat. Um, let's, let's think here. So it, it's a Echo deck, but without Zillion, which is interesting. We have the War Chef. We have the Mentor of the Stones. So I'm actually going to mulligan away these two, just because I need to find a one drop or a challenger, you know? Ideally a one drop. We have King Jarvan, so we got the late game covered. And we got Jarvan Jr. But again, we needed some earlier game pieces. Alright, Warship getting to attack. Not bad. Yeah, it's kind of questionable keeping Warchef and Mentor of the Stone sometimes because if you don't find... Not finding a one drop with, with these two, because if you get the Lauren Protege instead, then you, you got some plays. Whoa! Are, are you all in Kahiri? He chose something really quickly. Speak, Speak I say! Yeah, we're taking that hit. Okay, better late than never. This is actually a pretty good attack. I like the single combat. Helps us, uh, helps us level up. Jarvan. I'm gonna make that as a reference, like, where, where's your Zillion, bro? Where's your boy Zillion? All right, it seems like we know what to do here. All right, let's do this. So we want to like actually do this like this. So we're actually going to No quarter. <laughs> Prevails! Alright, let's test this one up. 
Let's see if we can take this down. Very, very important matchup. I kind of want to keep King German just because... I mean, they, they can have a bunch of stuns and everything. I'm going to mulligan away these two. But King German is not a bad win condition in this matchup because they don't have, like, AoE. They, just, they have, like, a cousin palms, but that's essentially it. We have the package here. Like, we can go War Chef's turn two and then Bryce Steel Protector. I don't need rules to know good from bad. Smell that? A bites are cooking. In and out. My shield is yours. I'm gonna empower the tracker to make it harder for my opponent to survive, yeah. He needs stuff like Twin Disciplines, like uh, Shapestone won't work. Just gotta keep going wide. Villains beware. More chefs. Cool eye patch. You like it? I'm mean fixing the world one scoundrel at a time. Those are really fast level up. How the hell did that happen so fast? He targeted him once, right? I felt like it happened so fast. We do have the Jarvan package, the Jarvan King Jarvan play here. Like this, this can amount to a lot. Cool, I bet. You like it? I mean, shut up and fight. You're covered. Concussive palm now can be a thing. But if it's not, or if it ain't, Can't fight on an empty stomach. we go in. Scum. We go in and we deal a lot of damage. Let's see if the Jarvan third win condition can work here. Fortunately, like Lee Sin is still not still not quite there. He can eliminate one of the units in our in our board here. But as long as Jarvan is safe, thanks to his barrier. Prepare yourself. Alright, here we go. <laughs> yes! Yeah, boy! Beautiful! Fine work, soldier. Fine work, baby! Alright, now we're facing a more combat-centered version of the region combination. Very, quite different deck, really. So to keep that in mind, we always keep the Fright Ibex in hand. We're gonna keep the Civil Combat as well. I could keep the Screeching Dragon, to be fair, but I think... There are other things I can draw into. And a 5 drop I would never really keep in the opener. Unless it's like a specific deck, you know, for it. This 1 drop is, is low-key, like, really, really, really neat. I love the art. And I love what it does. I, I love that it makes... 
it gives it gives um war chefs a sense of purpose again Progressing towards the level up. Heroes go hungry. You're covered. Smell that? A fight's a cooking. All right, let's think here. Definitely want to go for an open attack here. The question is, how many of these gems are we using? So if we boost you, we'll give you five health. Let's go for another one. No one goes hungry. Make it worth my while. Spirit's refuge. Okay. Oh. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. Could, even if he has another Sivir, that's... Oh, wow, 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 wow. We gotta play you, because we still have mana for these, these combat tricks, and we want to go again. We, we want to go Jarvan into, into Daddy Jarvan. Dude, with this deck, I find myself using Jarvan defensively more often, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. All right, let's do it. My king, victory is near. Then lead. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, this lake, this this lake game is like, it's so good. It's so underrated. Oh my lord. All right, see so yeah, how we fare against pirate aggro. I kind of want to keep the Tarek. Just because the stat line is really good. Oh, oh. Oh, that's a curve. All right. The problem is worship into this. I mean, a lot of times I'm just going to be trading this into whatever. So this curve is not as great as it seems just because of the matchup. We can't block with this. I mean, that's a good matchup for it, though. Like, seeing the rear guard. Though, man, I don't know. Maybe I just take the hit here. It depends on what they play. If they don't break, they'll burn. Yeah, I definitely take the hit. Make the Empire Feed Unless they have to make it rain. It's kind of scary. I promise if I play this, I 100% I play into a make it rain. Uh, do I play around that? I mean, if we block with the war, what do we benefit from having the war chef? Because this already like gets you enough. And this only make, makes it a 2-2, two -two, so it's, it's hard for them to block anyways. So I'm going to block with the war chef. Make it rain really punishes this. I'm gonna pass first. Okay. Looking into the future, I see purple. Just need a second. Go, Noti Crystals. Try me. It work for the level up. And if they play something, we can even play Mentor of the Stones defensively. At any cost. 
Otherwise, we just we gotta block here, right? Six damage is way too much. I can never justify that. I bring clarity. Ye stop it without me. We need to play more defensively here. Sure, you're all shiny and majestic, but can you float? I could certainly try. Celestial power. It's time to shine. Because right now, right now we have good blockers into everything. We had a good curve, but this is rather dull. If he attacks in, my what I'm thinking here is I'm gonna block with Mentor of the Stones and I'm gonna block with Tarek onto this. He can't attack with this because I just have a, uh, an easy trade with it with War Chef. But I want to go for the for the effect first. I should have probably gone for a gem here. Fade and be gone. A delicious challenge. Shatter that. Never submit. I gotta keep the single combat bluff activated, and I gotta spread out like this. I I, I was trying to fish for something with pill cascade, because right now I just don't I don't have the opening. Be nothing left when I'm done. Ah shit. We force all these trades, but as long as they have the lethal, as long as they got it, they got it. Ah, we, we clear him, but it's just this decimate, this incoming decimate. Oh, shit. Oh, there's Golden Aegis. Oh, if they don't have lethal on us, we can do it. Oh, come on. Oh, we're so close. Wait, it, it doesn't show... It doesn't show... Okay, no, that does. 
Ah, they managed to hit us there. I mean... Oh, we got him! Okay, oh my god. I don't know, sometimes I don't know what that means. Beautiful. That's like four in a row, right? Nah, bad. Getting that rank back, boy. Let's go for another one. All right, some more Lee Sin. We gotta apply the pressure again, but we, we need to find that sweet, sweet curve. Okay, that's part of the sweet curve. This is all part of the sweet curve. I'm gonna drop the concerted strike because I want more. There we go. One, two, three, four. Keeping it simple. Keeping it simple yet effective. What's really good about Flea Fed Tracker into War Chef is in this match specifically is that we can threaten the Eye of the Dragon. Even though obviously there are combat tricks. But the beautiful thing is that unless it's a shaped stone, Twin Disciplines will only be able to preserve. Will only enable them to preserve the Eye of the Dragon and not ex not actually trade with our Flea Fed Tracker because of the boost from the War Chef. Like right here. But I, I want to do better because we're not attacking on turn two. We're attacking on turn three. So we're going with Mentor of the Stones. You can bet your ass we're going with Mentor. We gotta be. We, we gotta put in the work here. In many matchups, Lauren Proje is the one to go. Turn three. Super great three drop in this meta. But against this deck specifically. Because of the region combination, not having really any pings. I mean, I'm not sure about Sharima exactly what pings they have, but the, the ones that they have are pretty much irrelevant because they're really, really expensive. So, we are going to resort to the Mentor Stones because their lack of interaction uh, with units like this, their lack of pings makes Mentor really strong. The Grant effect can just snowball. It can really give, give us the upper hand. So, Mentor in turn 3 here with a, one with a 1 drop and a 2 drop is just so powerful. He may be forced to just... Good cuss of palm, yeah. How, cra how crazy is that? We applied so much pressure, but we do. It does force us to 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 hold back. Like that concussive palm is definitely worth going for. We we'll go for for Taric now. Greed will turn any man into a monster. Don't worry, I am here. Could have a Sonic wave. Sonic Wave would be annoying here because it would allow him to trade this into this, but I, I still I still gotta play Car uh, Taric on Curve, and I gotta do so before they're able to play Lee Sin or something. Like I want to open attack next turn. Swipe it off. With purpose. We're taking this hit. We are taking this hit, aren't we? Let's think about this. Um, because if we block, there, there's a lot of ways that they can trade into that. But going you... How... I'm gonna, I'm gonna make use of this time, and I'm gonna think how I'm gonna attack next turn. Lost in reflection. 4-4, four, four, yeah. Alright, here we go. That's quite a bit of damage that we took there, like, with, which leaves us more vulnerable to Lee Sin later than line, but we also have Concerted Strike. We don't, we don't plan on doing anything next turn except for attacking. One power away. Twin Disciplines allows him to barely survive here. What if I just go like triple? No, it's the same effect. Oh. 
Twin Disciplines. Like, Twin Disciplines is quite simply the only card that does it. Absolver doesn't protect him. Shapestone doesn't protect him. It's Twin Disciplines or Lee Sin's Dead. And when there's only one card in his deck that does it, even if it's a three of, we go for it. Getting... Oh, this is huge. This is huge! Getting Lee Sin out of the board. Oh, that is... That is a headache that's out of the way. And that just feels great. Oh! Extend your senses. You cannot react to this. Okay, let's think here. Because he 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 wants to he wants to challenge he wants to get rid of Tarek. We have to protect him. We, we go for the Golden Aegis, we protect Tarek. And we rally. Not the greatest rally, but we take it, man. Like we protect him from whatever we want to do. Let's do this! The barrier is gone! Never submit. We rally again, we get rid of this last blocker. And we got Jarvan on the opener! I repeat, we got Jarvan on the opening! Oh shit! Oh, let's get it! Let's do this! I gotta stop saying let's get it! It's so cringe! <laughs> let's go! Stand with me! Viva España! Let's go! Oh, you're fishing! Conflict is all in the mind. Got him! Got him, baby! Oh! And that's a session, dude. This deck is legit. This deck is just legit. I, I, I was like down to like low uh, diamond three again, and this deck just got me back up, man. Like, wow. This deck actually performed much better than yesterday's Viego list, which is like more meta. This deck is this deck is so underrated. Like this archetype, and and Fright Apex does so much for it. Like making Warchefs like a legit thing. We 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 didn't get to showcase Mountain Sojourner, but we got to showcase the King Jarvan late game, and and like I, I think I think one of the secrets. I mean I would have gone over this in the deck tech, right? But one of the secrets with Tarek is actually not going so heavy on the spells to combine him with. Just run Pill Cascade and Golden Aegis and some gems. That's all you need. That is all you need. It's all about this combo, man. And Pill Cascade is still fantastic with him, but we, we barely used it on him in, in, in the series. Like, Golden Aegis is the reason to play Tarek. This deck is really, really good. It just keeps winning. It just wins. Like, I... It's, it doesn't lose. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. All right. I'm going to stop talking. Leave a like for Tarek, Beach Style, and of course for Jarvan. I love playing Jarvan, man. And the Fryan Apex, really nice addition that actually made, I believe this one drop single-handedly like makes this archetype a lot stronger, which is really cool. Yeah, I just really like this deck. I'm really proud of it. So I'm going to stop talking. Have a solid day. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for Daily Legends over from Terra content. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you tomorrow with another one.